welcome. Thank you so much for joining me um, and uh, for your flexibility last week with the rescheduled webinar. Um, I do appreciate it. Um, so we will go ahead and dive into our content today. Um, got some really good stuff to share with you all. Uh, and so this is the last um, webinar in our series of the Job Search 2.0. And this is LinkedIn Unlocked. And so this we'll be talking today about some advanced strategies for you all if you are using LinkedIn for job search or you are really thinking about it. Okay, um, so what we will cover today is um, we'll cover a good amount of content about just sort of the job search features and some um, things to really keep in mind when you're using LinkedIn for the job search to really um, help yourself get noticed more by the re by recruiters on LinkedIn, um, as well as I've got some really good screenshots about um, how recruiters see LinkedIn and how your profile um, pops up for them in search results, which I think is really, really helpful when you're strategizing how to, um, uh, things to do with your profile. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the interview prep feature on LinkedIn, which is kind of hidden. Um, so you may or may not have um, seen that before. And then a little bit about LinkedIn learning at the end as well. Um, you know, just with LinkedIn in general, like there is so much that we could go into detail here. But I think in terms of job searching, um, these are some of the bigger topics to talk about. Um, and so if you've joined me before, um, you know, just please use the Q&A. Um, if you've got questions, you can throw them in there throughout. We'll have pauses for questions, a couple of them throughout the presentation today. And um, then we will, okay. Um, and then I'll get to them when we have a pause for questions. So um, we'll move on. Uh, again, if you've been with me before, you've seen this information, but uh, if, for, if you've not joined me before, um, I always like to talk a little bit about the resources that you have, uh, whether you are a current student or a graduate of any academic program at the university, you do have access to Career Services Free for Life, which is amazing. Um, it is a, that is a, um, one of the really great benefits of the university that not a lot of institutions um, provide for their graduates. And so when we say free for life, that's what we mean. We will never charge you for career advising um, and uh, most of the events, most if not all of the events that I ever will do are going to be free for you. Uh, and it is for life. So I meet with all ages and stages, which is really fun. Um, so there's a lot of things that we can talk about over there on the left hand side in a one on one advising appointment. That is the bulk of my job. Um, and then as well as some resources that you have access to over here on the, the right hand side. Um, we do use a platform called Handshake. If you are not sure what that is, or if you are questions about how to get access to Handshake, just send me an email and I am happy to help you get started with that because that's really the best way to schedule an appointment with me. So I would like to make sure you have um, knowledge of these resources. And uh, now let's get into our content. So um, I have quite a few slides on job search with LinkedIn. Um, if you have used LinkedIn before for job searches or not, um, I, you know, I think this is really helpful information and hopefully some of it is new to you or it's just a really good refresher. Um, one of the biggest questions that I always get about LinkedIn is do recruiters actually ask, look at the applications on LinkedIn? Yes, they do. Um, well over 50%, I think it's in the high 60s or mid 70% um, range of recruiters use LinkedIn for sourcing candidates. Um, so it is a place where a lot of recruiters are. So it's a good place to see and be seen in terms of being a job seeker. So yes, they do. Um, and some of the screenshots that I have in a few slides are going to show you what they see from their end, because with LinkedIn, if you don't know this, um, they have, as a recruiter, if you're actively sourcing candidates to fill postings, um, they have a... Um, I'm not sure what the word, word is that I want, but they have a, uh, like an access that they can, like LinkedIn premium, like we could purchase LinkedIn premium if we wanted. They can, um, sales navigator or recruiter, 
um, they can purchase that, you know, a, a, a yearly subscription and it gets them some really interesting search features for candidates to source the profiles. And, and um, that's where people might see, or if you have seen this before, you might get messages from recruiters to say, you know, hey, I noticed your profile. You seem like a good fit for this position that I'm um, hiring for. Would you be interested in applying? Um, so yes, it is not just a black hole that your application or your profile gets put into. Recruiters do notice you. Um, the other thing with job search, these are just some good um, tidbits and things to keep in mind. And of course, I'll always send out the slides afterwards. Um, you want to use the open to button, which is on your profile. And we'll talk uh, more in depth about that in a couple, a few minutes. Um, uh, so, but this will not notify your contacts you're actively searching. Um, and it does help you get um, noticed earlier in their search results. Um, so I think the last um, statistics that I saw on this was well over 80%. I think it was like 92% of people always have on LinkedIn, 92% of users always have the open to button on turned on on their profile, right? Even if they're content and they're not actively searching, um, it's just a good thing to have going on there. Um, one of the other big questions that I get is, you know, I think a lot of people are tempted on LinkedIn when you're looking at jobs and is the quick apply. Uh, here's my thought on it. Um, I don't know that it's really going to give you the most quality application that you want. Um, so because it's really just going to submit whatever you have on your profile. Now. The thing to keep in mind with that is if you feel like your profile is um, geared towards and targeting the roles that you want, it's up to date, um, everything is looking the way that you want it, um, then perhaps thinking about doing the quick apply. Um, but I think a really good strategy with this is to cross reference. Um, so when you're looking, you know, when you're using LinkedIn to source um, you know, job openings, always just take, do yourself a little due diligence and cross-reference that. So look on their company website, um, you know, see if they have um, this job still posted up there um, to apply for. And if it's still actively open on their job site, more than likely um, applying through LinkedIn is going to be good, right? Um, because there are some situations where recruiters might have like just um, finalized an offer or just closed the position and finished the hiring for that. Um, but they just, there's a little bit of lag time between that process and when they actually take the posting down from LinkedIn. So just do a little cross-reference, take you probably about a minute or two to do that and just make sure that it's still actively posted. Um, you can also search with job, the jobs tab. Um, searching by the level. And the thing that I love about this, so always click your all filters and, and get really specific there um, with what you're looking for. Uh, the other thing too here is to save um, those job alerts uh, for this the search filter. So of course, that's not when you save your filters. So it's not going to save the specific results that you get. So if you get a result of, you know, 249 jobs that pop up for these filters you've put in, it's not gonna save those specific jobs. Of course, you can always like those specific postings and that'll save it into your My Jobs tab. Um, but what this um, saving the filters will do is it'll just save those parameters. Uh, so that's called a job alert on LinkedIn. And so when you're in your jobs tab, this is going to, um, the job alerts will work with the algorithm to then recommend certain jobs for you. So if you get those emails all the time or sometimes about, you know, or if you log in and you look at your notifications and you see, oh, hey, all of these jobs were recommended to me. If either, like if those are way off base and you're like, those are not what I'm looking for, um, go into the job alerts 
part of your jobs tab and um, really rework those to make sure that that's what you're aiming for. That's probably where the issue is there. Um, mine always for years have looked messed up because I, I look at other people's jobs that they send me to review. So LinkedIn thinks that I'm interested in a wide variety of jobs. Um, Referrals, again, always work the referrals, even when you're applying for jobs through LinkedIn. I think this is really, really important here. Um, and then again, under the jobs tab, what you want to do is update and just just to give a double check on your preferences. It's over, it's over there on the left hand side. Um, and again, this is going to help the algorithm to recommend better things for you. I think one of the big things and I've got a slide next to go into more detail is um, I loved learning this. I don't know why it took me so long to learn this, but when you are searching in the main search bar for jobs, use a Boolean search. Um, again, I don't know why it never occurred to me a while ago to do this, but it really helps to be specific. So um, the next slide here is a really nice graphic that I love to just break down. Um, what does this mean? Um, because I always hear this term, but I don't know exactly what it means. So um, this is what it's going to give you. It's going to either, you know, you can use it a few different ways to either narrow your search, broaden your search. Most people want to narrow search um, to get really specific. Because if I were to go into uh, the LinkedIn jobs tab and in the search box up there at the top, if I just typed in learning and development, nothing else, or learning and development specialist, it's going to bring up pro. It's going to bring up jobs that have the word learning, the word development, and the word specialist anywhere in that job. So that's going to give me a bunch of stuff that I really don't want to sift through, and that's going to take a lot of time. So what you want to do with this is be specific, and so put some. Um, if you were so, if you were looking for learning and development roles, right? Um, you could, in quotations, put learning and development. And so that's going to give you a much better search result. And then you can go over to your all filters and get even more specific. Like if you were looking for a specific region within the U.S. or a certain um, company size or whatever else is important to you. Um, so just make sure that you're, you're searching the right way to really get specific and find what you want. Because otherwise, like any other job search site, this is going to end up giving you a, a bunch of stuff. It's just going to take way too much time to search through. So really play around with this and see kind of what comes up for you. Um, so now I had mentioned previously the open to tab. Um, I think this is just always a good thing every once in a while to just sort of check yourself with. Um, so if it's been a while or you might need to get a little bit more specific, maybe what you're looking for has changed, um, go in here and mess around with um, the filters that you have set in place. Um, so the open to, again, majority of people, users on LinkedIn, just keep this open all the time, even if they're not really actively searching. Um, it's just a, again, just a nice way to keep popping up in the recruiter search results. So um, one of the big things here that I learned was um, the job titles piece. This is what, when a recruiter is searching to fill roles, um, they're going to use the already populated job titles that LinkedIn has. So um, use the ones. So when you're putting in your job titles here, don't make one up is what is really important here. Um, start typing. Uh, like, so say again, if you're looking for um, learning and development specialists, start typing learning and development and see what is coming up for you um, when you're putting this information in and pick one of those that best suits what you're going for. Um, because again, that's going to help have a much more direct correlation to the search um, parameters that recruiters are putting in for those roles that you're aiming for. Um, again, this will, this is the biggest, I think, um, uh, concern or fear of people that have this open to button turned on, um, it will not 
blast your network. It will not notify your contacts that, hey, Becca is looking for a job, right? Even if it's just passively. Um, really, the only thing that you're going to do uh, that this is going to do is that, again, it's going to help your profile pop up quicker in the recruiter's searches um, to get the ones to get noticed for the jobs you want to get noticed for, you do need to be specific. So work again with the job titles, jo um, locations, if that's important to you. And again, now in the last couple of years, they've really narrowed it down to, you know, so I'm open to remote work, hybrid, that kind of stuff. I think that's actually an old screenshot. Um, but currently they do have an option for hybrid and remote um, or on site. Um, when you scroll down to the bottom, the image there on the right, um, you almost always want to choose um, the option of recruiters only as opposed to all LinkedIn members because you'll when you mess around with this and see um, the all LinkedIn members is going to put that lovely green banner on you uh, your profile um, now, I guess, I mean, I, I guess it depends on the individual situation. If this is you really, really, really are actively and you don't care that other people are knowing, um, you know, you might want to put that on and just sort of see what the responses are like. The majority of people that I know just choose recruiters only. Um, and the other thing to remember, too, here is that this will not... Um, blast to your current company. Most people that I know are in confidential job searches. Um, so they're not going to want their boss or their colleagues or the recruiters in their HR department to know, hey, Becca's looking for a job. This will not blast to them that you're that this is what you're doing. Um, so I think this is really helpful to, again, just help you pop up sooner in those search results. Um, for those things that you're looking for. So the next few slides that I have, this was um, honestly, when I learned about this, this was very exciting for me because I've always wanted to know what the recruiters see because how better to be prepared and aim for what they're looking for than to know what they see, right? So when a recruiter has, um, you'll see at the top, um, this was from a certification that I just finished. Um, so um, you'll see there at the top, it's the LinkedIn recruiter um, icon. So this is their login for this. Now, of course, this is a fake profile that this person shared um, that she created just for training purposes. Um, but what I love about this, so this is the view of if they were looking at um, your profile specifically, right, um, from their recruiter view. And so this is what they're going to see. And I think when you're, this is helpful for when you're thinking, how do I gear my profile to get um, noticed more and to really get picked up for those jobs that I want? Um, and so um, what they, what's important here is think the top few things that you need to remember when you're editing your profile and gearing it towards those desired roles is one picture. Your picture needs to look professional and approachable. And there are easy ways to do this at home if you can't like get in front of a professional photographer or something like that. Um, but the I know um, that might be obvious to some people, um, but there are a lot of different types of profile pictures out there. So make sure that it's, again, typically what we want to see is sort of this view, right? Like we're going to do about shoulders up. Um because that makes your face much more prominent and noticeable. And you just want to be approachable, right? Um, watch your stance. So don't cross your arms, things like that, right? Um, so your picture needs to look really great. Uh, and then the, the other two things here too that are really important is that headline. I cannot stress enough how much that headline needs to be geared towards what you are going after. I've got a really good formula in a few slides if you're thinking, that sounds great, Becca, but I don't know what to put in that headline. Because if you don't edit the headline, it's going to default to your current job, your current experience that you have listed. The last thing here that's really important is going to be that summary section, the about me, I think is what they call it now. Um, I know they're always changing things, so I'm not entirely sure here. 
So um, that summary section and the couple things to keep in mind with summary, they do not want you to write them a novel. Please don't write them three paragraphs. Okay. Um, this is a good place to, again, sort of like keyword or skills dump. And so just put a bunch of those things in there that are going to help you get picked up by those desired for those desired roles. Um, and in the in terms of the recruiter view and catching their attention really quickly, because that's your goal, um, that first line needs to that first line needs to align with what what they're hiring for, right? What you're going after. So the rest of it is supporting evidence, right? But that first line needs to hook them in and get them interested. So this is a screenshot of what the all of the filters and um, parameters that a recruiter can use to source candidates on LinkedIn. I love this is really interesting. Most of it is supplemental and something interesting that they can use to search by. Um, but the really important things here and what I learned that I love, and again, it goes to what you need to highlight in your profile and what you need to do. The spotlights, and again, I'm sorry if this is really hard to see. I will send out the slides so you can zoom in if you need to um, and really look and see. Um, the spotlights refers to, so the more likely to engage, um, and this is in my recommendations in a couple slides. Um, if you are at le if you are remotely interested in a company and or particularly if you are applying or have applied, Go to that company page on LinkedIn, hit that blue follow button, because this is where this shows, right? If you are, you are you more likely to engage? Are you following them? Are you keeping up with their news on LinkedIn, right? If you're thinking, if you're thinking, oh, it's silly, it kind of feels like a game. It's a little bit of a game, right? But this is what we're doing to get noticed on LinkedIn. So the more likely to engage is going to be, are you following their company page on LinkedIn? Are you engaging with them? right? Job titles refers to what is in your experience section. Um, locations is sort of less important. Um, and the other thing really um, important down here for them is that skills and assessments, right? Or and, uh, skills. Um, I've talked about this in the previous LinkedIn webinar, but again, really, really important here when you are editing your profile. Um, you need to be putting in there, um, when you scroll a little bit down your page, you're gonna see a skills section, skills and endorsements. Um, you need to edit those and again, gear those towards those jobs, those desired jobs, those desired roles that you have in mind, right? What are the keywords and skills that you're seeing in those job descriptions? And that's what you need to edit those towards. The other really important thing here too that a while ago, sometime last year, I think um, LinkedIn added was um, you can't, when you edit your skill section down there at the bottom of your profile, you can then choose to say like, for example, if you have um, recruiting or admissions or learning and development, if you have those skills listed in your skills section, you can tie those specific skills to certain experiences that you have listed in the top part of your profile. That's what you wanna do, right? And again, uh, as I talked about a little bit last week, um, frequency is good here, right? So if you have you know, learning and development popping up for like the first three roles that are listed on your LinkedIn profile, they're gonna see this person's been doing this skill for a while, that's good for them, right? Um, so again, I love this image because it highlights what's important for you to be doing here on LinkedIn. So editing those skills on your profile, that's going to help that algorithm work for you and get you noticed in those jobs you want. Um, follow the companies. Okay. Um, okay. So this image is, um, uh, yes. So this is, uh, say this recruiter is using this, they're, they're looking at, you see on the left hand side, this is highlighted for all active candidates. Um, this is them looking at the, pro, the um, candidates or applications they've had for a certain position they have open. Again, this highlights for you what they see 
what is most important for you to be focusing on with your profile to get noticed because this is how they're going to sort of start to make judgment calls on okay this person is interesting to me they have what i'm looking for this is I'm, i want to follow up with them um so again that picture is key um please please for the love of all that is good in this world do not make it blank have a good approachable profile picture on there um you need to really be able to highlight that face right um your headline, again, is going to be really important. Um, and your a little bit about this experience section. So it's just going to pull the top few experiences that you have listed there. Um, there's sort of a debate, a, a little bit of a debate, right? Like, I, so I'll leave you, I'll give you the information. You can decide for yourself. Um, with the experience, there is an option now in the last year or so that LinkedIn has put in there that you can add in a career break. You took time off from the workforce for whatever reason. It was important. You needed to do it, right? Um, if you have a couple career breaks in there, what it's going to look like is a role and then a couple, right? So that's, so again, there's the debate, right? Is um, do you put that career break in there or not on LinkedIn, right? Um, because you want to have the recruiter seeing your experience. Um, so if you are perhaps re-entering the workforce and it's been some time, um, you know, maybe the career break is mentioned in the about me section. And with your experience section on LinkedIn, you have listed the roles that you've had throughout your um, time in the workforce, right? Um, so that's just a thought to leave you with. And again, like, you know, um, any individual situations I'm happy to chat about. So I like this image just again, because it really um, highlights for you what they're gonna be seeing and what they're gonna be seeing to start moving forward with, with candidates or not. Um, the next slide that I have, um, I love this. I found this when I was poking around LinkedIn. Um, and again, if you're going to be diving into LinkedIn and trying to use this more for job search and, and just generally propelling yourself forward, um, I love this, right? I, I, most of our minds are geared towards checklists. We just want something simplified. Um, give me some things to do. Um, so again, I'm happy to send these slide decks out later. Um, but here are some things to really think about. A lot of them we've talked about, right? Um, you know, uploading a resume, making sure your profile picture is good, um, turning on the open to work feature, that kind of stuff, right? So in terms of using LinkedIn for job search, um, and I've got the next half of our presentation is focusing on um, the interview prep and some LinkedIn learning information. Uh, but in terms of using LinkedIn to job search, again, here are some really good takeaways to remember. Great photo. Are you approachable? Is this somebody that they might want to have a quick chat with, right? Um, the headline formula, I love this because, again, this is always, this is one of the questions that I get. Um, so your either your current or target role, so, um, you know, career advisor, um, recruiter, like wherever you are, if you want to stay where, stay what you're doing currently, do that. Um, if you're, you know, if you're just sort of looking to move around or wherever you're targeting to be, either that's like a career change, a little bit of a pivot. Um, if you're trying to move up to more of a managerial role, um, a couple few keywords and top skills. Again, this is going to be related to those desired roles that's going to help you get picked up by the algorithm. And then um, perhaps think about maybe like an X factor for you or like a big win, right? Um, again, skills are really, really important here. We talked about that, linking the skills on your profile to one, match the desired roles, and then two, linking specific skill, linking skills to specific jobs that are listed or experiences listed on your LinkedIn profile. Um, again, like and follow the companies on LinkedIn, especially if you are applying, because yes, that is a filter that they have. It's at the top of their, it's at the top of their um, list for filters for a reason, because it's something that's important to them. Um, 
the headline and about me, the about me is the first two lines. One thing I didn't talk about a minute ago with this was with the about me section. Um, and when you're thinking about how things flow, so one of the last images that we looked at, you know, this is what they're seeing. Um, your headline and your about me should not be repeats of themselves. They should flow and tell more of a story. So build on each other, right? Um, again, referrals are really key here. Glanceability matters. Um, and one of the things that I really uh, was interested to learn was that LinkedIn is actually in beta mode to validate job posters and companies. So you're going to there, you see like probably like a blue or green check mark um, soon besides companies and jobs. Uh, because like, I mean, there's just so many um scams out there that happen that they're really trying to get in front of um, making sure that what you are seeing and applying for is valid. Um, so I see that we have one question in the uh, Q&A, so thanks very much for that. And we will, um, I'll answer that. If anybody else has a, a question, you can pop them in there. Um, so somebody asked, how is it important is it to be following the company? It's pretty important. Um, I think, you know, kind of what we saw was that, um, that is definitely a thing that's a um, um, a determining factor um, in terms of like how likely are you to engage with them um, on LinkedIn. So just it gives you a really quick follow um, and you can also create job alert alerts for specific companies if that's of interest to you as well. So one of the things that I thought was super interesting, I discovered this a couple years ago, um, that again, it's, you know, LinkedIn has a ton of stuff, a ton of features, um, but you got to spend time poking around their website. Um, and this was one of those things that I found sort of haphazardly, um, I, I, um, I found haphazardly because I was just kind of looking around the jobs tab. So the interview prep is, I, I think it's actually super, super cool. You know, if you're, if you're a current student here or an alumni, like this is one of the ways in which you can prep for interviews, which is amazing. Of course, you always have access to mock interviews with us and we do have a platform called big interview. Um, but on LinkedIn, so there's a lot that you can do with this with um, the like the non-premium profile, so the free version of LinkedIn. Um, because if you were with me last week, I did give you my little TED talk about LinkedIn premium. Um, but um, with the, the free version, you can um, look at frequently asked interview questions. They can, you can look at the tips that experts give you for answering them. And you can practice answering and get feedback too. Um, so the great thing is, so this is the screenshot here is just one sort of common questions um, category. There's lots of other categories that you can look at in terms of like job type. So it'll give you some typical questions. Like uh, I think one of them's like, you know, admin roles or something like that. So there's lots of different types of roles in there that you can look common questions for. Um, the, um, when the, when LinkedIn gives you tips for answering, um, and how to approach these questions, it's not, um, just, you know, there, there, it's information that's given by experts that LinkedIn has vetted for this. Um, it's not just, you know, say like a random staff person at LinkedIn that's like, I think this is how you should answer. Tell me about yourself. Um. So it is provided by experts that do work in this stuff. Um, and so um, it, the subject matter experts, uh, categories for questions. So again, you can look by industry or role type and, and look at some common questions for that. Um, in terms of practicing, you can either record your answers or write them and get feedback. Now there's a couple ways that you can get feedback here, which is really interesting. One. Um, you can get feedback from the AI, which is good quality feedback. Um, or you can say if you recorded an answer, um, you could, LinkedIn has the feature for you to send it to say, um, you know, like a first degree connection there. Like if it's a really trusted contact, um, you could send it to them and, and um, you could request feedback. 
Now, of course, all of your practice answers are private and only you can see them. Um, this is also just a really good way to practice with technology and having yourself recorded um, if, you, if you know you have video interviews coming up. Because one of the popular things now with interviewing is to have um, pre-recorded interviews. If you ever had to do one, you know exactly what I'm talking about and it was probably not the most pleasant experience. Um, I don't know many people that really love the pre-recorded. So um, it's typically what would happen. It's usually a very first interview. A recruiter would send you a link um, and it's, it's exactly that. Um, you've got pre-recorded questions and they give you a t um, in a specific amount of time to answer that question, record your answer and send it to the recruiter. Um, typically it's used for screenings. Um, those are not a lot of fun um, and very nerve wracking for many people. And so this could be a really great way to practice just getting into the mindset of recording yourself and getting used to that. Um, this also really gives you good feedback on things like pacing of your speech, using filler words. Um, and you can rewatch this as many times as you want to, um, to help yourself with, um, with getting comfortable. So again, I love this feature. I think um, it's definitely worth playing around with. Um, and I love it, if nothing else, just to see some of the tips and tricks that they give you for answering specific kind of questions. Because that's always the most, um, you know, if you just knew how to approach a specific question, uh, make you feel a lot more comfortable. Um, so LinkedIn learning is something that I wanted to touch base on a little bit. Um, first of all, to know with LinkedIn learning, you, you might know if you've been messing around with LinkedIn very much, um, is that typically it's a premium feature. So this would be through the premium subscription. However, if you are a current um, University of Richmond student and um, you might even be able to access it as an alumni with your University of Richmond email, um, you could try it and see. Um, but all current students and faculty staff get access to the LinkedIn learning feature for free. It's a perk of the university. Um, and so this does not give you access to the rest of the premium features like in mail, um, you know, who's viewed your profile, that kind of stuff. But it does give you access to the LinkedIn learning feature. And I am, when I send out my follow up email, um, I will send out the link. Um, from our IT department to access the LinkedIn learning feature. Um, I'm going to make a note for myself, learning link. Okay. So um, I love this. I I've messed around with it quite a bit. It's just kind of interesting. Like if you, if you're just really interested in, you know, feeling like you're brushing up on stuff, you're learning new stuff. Um, it's a great thing to see what they have out there. So again, it's got a lot of, you know, really, it's got a really good search feature. So you can use different filters. You can filter through time to complete. So if you're feeling, you know, a little bit stretched, but you still want to do some short courses, there are great options out there. Um, it's got, you can filter for like um, continuing ed units, if that's important for your industry or your job. Um, and always check out the related courses too, to give you sort of more recommendations. This is a huge library. It's got over 13,000 um, on-demand courses and really high quality again. Um, LinkedIn sources subject matter experts for these. And so these are not just taught by random people. Um, these are taught by people that are experienced in the subject. Um, and they add a, a bunch every week. Um, so I definitely recommend, you know, sort of checking that out. Um, this is just a, um, a sort of a snapshot of what you might find um, when you search for something. I just did a random search for Excel. Um, not that I'm not that I love Excel, um, but it might be something that I want to brush up on. Right. And so this is what you'll see. So over on the left on your LinkedIn learning page, you will um, there's different categories. So if you click through the business technology or creative, you'll see a bunch of different stuff that comes up. Um, you can have your My Library. Um, you can have goals you can set for yourself here. 
um, you can look at your certifications as well. So if you look through here again, you'll get all filters. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can search for courses. Um, it does show you more popular ones. Um, and um, you can you see over there on the right hand side, you can save them to to your my library. So if you're you know, if you're like, oh, this one looks really interesting. I don't have time for it, but I want to come back to it later. You can save it. Um, so again, just really recommend sort of messing around and seeing what comes up for you in this. Um, so just a couple notes about um, watching and completing the courses. So um, you can always, from your homepage with LinkedIn Learning, you can check your current or in-progress courses. Um, because if you're like me, you know, um, last week seems like a distant memory. And so let's remind ourselves what we did last week uh, if we started a course and then we forgot to finish it, right? Um, you can ha see your related courses and recommendations. You can, again, set and track goals for yourself. You can do skills evaluations, which is what we saw. Oops. Oh, come on. Um, if you see here, this blue button, this start skill evaluation, um, for Excel, right? And so you can sort of get a snapshot of where you're at with this, um, subject and where you might need to start at. So maybe you're at more of an intermediate level. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm at a beginner level with Excel. Um, but you can do a skill evaluation and you can also browse certifications to pursue. Um, so each course, again, it's really, um, I didn't do a screenshot of a specific course, but each course is really has a lot going on with that page when you look at it. Um, so it always has a welcome video. So if you if you saw one pop up in your search results and you're like, oh, it seems kind of interesting um, and you want to know more about it, it's always got a welcome video. It's like one or two minutes and it just gives you a really quick kind of abstract overview of what will happen. And so you, you can make a quick decision on if this is something that I want to do or not. Um, you, this does move very easily and fluidly through from mobile to desktop version of LinkedIn. Um, you can get transcripts for it. You can do closed captioning. Um, mo the majority, if not all the courses come with exercise files and quizzes. I love this, right? Like I can save this to my desktop, um, and I can come back to the information too. Um, and you can always sort of browse through the course chapters and see your progress. Um, so I, I think it's a really sort of well-rounded, they have edited, they have uh, made a lot of changes to the LinkedIn learning courses, which have been really, really positive and beneficial. Um, and the other thing too, so I see that somebody submitted a question, um, that I'll go ahead and talk about right now. Um, so yes, um, recruiters can see the courses you've completed if you choose to add them to your profile. And so the screenshot here is, um, for, I think from my profile, I did one years ago about recovering from a layoff as I was getting started with this position because layoffs were something I was seeing a lot of with you know, clients I was meeting with. And so um, you can choose to show your credential and add it to your profile. And that is, I believe it's under the specific course page. Um, you can click through and it should, I think it's pretty self-explanatory to add it to your profile. Um, and yes, I think the other question down here was, um, are skills badges a thing anymore? And do recruiters look at those? Um, uh, took the skills assessment Excel for Excel and did really well. Um, first of all, great. I'm sure you can teach me some stuff about Excel. Um, but uh, yes. And so I think that they do look at it, right? Um, again, when you're thinking about like the algorithm on LinkedIn and how are you getting picked up what parts of your profile, um, this is one of those things that goes into it, right? And so this could be um, part of those things that are popping up for the recruiter when they're looking further at your profile. You do have these like skills and certifications in these areas that are important to the recruiter and important to this role. So I do think it is a good thing, right? If you have access to it um, and you have the time and capacity, I absolutely think. Um, and at, at the at the minimum, it's not going to hurt you. And I think actually it will help you. Um, the last thing that I wanted to cover um, today is this is, again, sort of like a little bit of a lesser known thing. And it was fairly recently added. 
um, that I kind of really love. They are the learning paths and role guides part of LinkedIn. Um, this is really great. I could see somebody who's maybe looking to change a little bit of a direction with their career or and or you're re-entering the workforce after a career break. And it's going to be important for you to figure out kind of like these are the these are the types of roles that I'm looking at. Help me understand how to get there. What are they all about? And so um, learning paths are um, their entire sort of course loads. Think of it like, I guess, a mini cert or something to teach you specific skills. Um, like this one, you know, is project manager. Um, it's about nine hours is what it says. And so these are really great things to sort of get you brushed up to speed. Or again, if you're re-entering the workforce, um, this is something that you can do to showcase, hey, I do have background and knowledge in this area, right? Uh, again, broken down into sections and items that are more manageable. And um, it does give you learning outcomes and course objectives. I love this. So when you're looking at different, um, you know, possible learning paths to pursue, you can quickly glance and see um, their learning outcomes is this are these things that I want to learn, skills I want to achieve. Um, the role guides are really good. They're more informational. And so, um, again, if you're sort of exploring, um, thinking maybe about some changes, but I'm not really sure what goes into this, um, consider looking at some of the role guides to see you know, um, what are these all about, right? They really do give you a lot of good foundational content um, and tools for some of the more trending industry roles. Um, so this is also really helpful. Like if you're looking to make some changes in your career or move around um, and you're wondering to yourself, what are some of the more trending areas? Take a look at some of the role guides and see what's coming up um, because that can give you an idea. You know, these are, might have a little bit of a brighter outlook in terms of hiring. Um, it does give you some connections to professional communities, um, and you can set this if you're looking at role guides and you have one that's really interesting to you, um, you can set it as a goal in LinkedIn, and it'll help you personalize your experience, so it'll give you better recommendations in terms of LinkedIn learning courses, um, and you can also choose your level here, which is really, really great. Um, so again, just it's a couple of those features of LinkedIn that I discovered and I thought, wow, I mean, this is just really fantastic. Um, I think overall LinkedIn is just really, they're really trying to um, be sort of very holistic and well-rounded place for people to be, no matter where you are in your professional development or in your career journey. Um, so this is the end of my formal presentation. I'll hang, you know, if you've got any other questions, um, please do pop them in the Q&A. But I hope that today was, um, just gave you some more things to think about in terms of what you can do with LinkedIn. Um, I um, continue to be amazed and interested in what LinkedIn is doing. Um, They're constantly changing stuff, which is hard to keep up with, but also really interesting and it, it keeps the members engaged. Um, so again, if you have any um, specific questions, if you want to chat one-on-one -on -one, um, about your situation or how to use LinkedIn better for yourself, um, please reach out, send me a quick email. I would love to chat more with you. Um, but in the meantime, I will get the slides out and I hope that you all have a wonderful day. Uh, and a great week. Thank you.